Who's EPH? I'm the engineer to build WGLP with Bob McGowan at Fort Times Square. And I'm being interviewed for what purpose? Uh, my, you my YouTube channel. Okay, and what's my commission? Oh, let's see, he wants a deal. 10% of nothing, maybe? I don't know, maybe you make a lot of money on your YouTube. You don't make any. All right, uh, I'm willing to uh, participate. Great! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hi. Uh, uh, Frank Martin, Ed Nixon, over the air TV channel with the world famous Mark Sist Simpson from Treveni Digital here at NAB 2019. And I'm here to ask you about was it still called ATSC 3.0? I guess it depends you, who you ask. I mean, certainly Next Gen TV is now promoted as the consumer facing brand and logo that will be avail you know, uh, available for TV set manufacturers to use. Okay, to so there's. Okay, compliance, you know, with new appropriate. Brand. Yeah, appropriate things. Basically, trying to make it so consumers can understand when they're getting a next gen TV set or not. But we vendors still call it ATSC 3.0, sure. Uh, we think that the leading, uh, you know, software provider for what was called PSIP is, uh, and, and it's called something else in ATSC 3, is Treveni. And, and that's where we are here at Treveni. Uh, well, that's true. We had uh, uh, and still do have uh, very large market shares in in the thing called PSIP, which is essentially the guide standard, the metadata. Program Service Information Protocol. Yes. Um, I might have been able to say that myself, but I'm not sure. You just saw Anyway, but, uh, you know, it essentially is the, the, the standard for communicating programming guides, but other things as well, like signaling for closed captions and other elements of the ATSC-1 broadcast stream. In ATSC-3, it's much more complicated than that, but uh, similar kinds of signaling you know, will be needed. Isn't it just called Program Guide in 3, something like that? Um, well, it really is still, in some sense, has to roll out. I mean, some people call these things now, instead of EPG for Electronic Programming Guide, you sometimes hear ESG for Electronic Service Guide. And exactly what broadcasters decide to put on the air is not completely clear. There's no mandate as there was in PSIP from the FCC, at least as of now. Um, and we're most likely we'll see more advanced forms of guides with possibly, um, you know, preview clips, certainly more imagery and so on to have a more advanced guide experience. But that, that's yet to really fully roll out as broadcasters make decisions on you know exactly what their service profile looks like. So ATSC3 is a different modulation scheme, COFDM, a different data rate that is variable, usually about 26 megabytes per second, yeah. and uh, uh, and it supports multiple you know codecs and everything, and it can support 4K and all this stuff. Yes. Now, how does the uh, how much data does the Trevini what is what will be guide builder? What will be the product? What's the product for ATSC three from Trivini? You mean the, in terms of branding? Is that yeah. it was called guide builder for uh, PSIP. We're preserving a lot of our historic brands. Guide builder being one of the prominent ones. And if it's the ATSC three version, we say XM. So guide builder XM is our ATSC three version of the guide builder platform which does similar things in some sense in ATSC3 signaling, also so-called announcement, meeting the delivery of the guide itself. Uh, in addition, Guide Builder does, uh, in the 3.0 version, things like uh, appropriate signaling for DRM types of uh, delivery. Digital uh, rights management. Yeah, and you know what they call NRT, which is non-real-time delivery. Classically, we call that data broadcast. There's parts of the Guide Builder product that do that. Over time, there will be um, a resurgence of our Skyscraper brand, which was the, just like Guide Builder was by far the market share leader and still is in ATSC1 PSIP, Skyscraper was by far and still is the market share leader in ATSC1 data broadcasting. And is there a stream scope for three? Oh, sure. And in fact, uh, we just had a very major deal that we'll be announcing shortly with, with, um, you know, one of the more aggressive ATSC three uh, broadcast if you companies. Point at the screen over here. You can see StreamScope. StreamScope has various um, uh, product family members, and again, XM. So over here is StreamScope XMMT, 
historically MT was our analyzer. MT is monitoring and troubleshooting. We're going to kind of revamp the branding so you'll be able to buy a StreamScope XM analyzer, StreamScope XM monitor, StreamScope you know, XM dashboard system. Uh, one of the key points about our product line though as we enter this new era of next gen TV, 1.0 is not going anywhere. Not for a long time. What's not going anywhere? ATSC 1.0. Oh. When when a, when a, the broadcasters are contemplating putting up an ATSC 3 lighthouse, as they call it, in a city, you know, one station gives up all its frequency to ATSC 1 and hosts a few other ATSC 3 signals. What happens to their ATSC 1 service? That goes on to other broadcasters' towers. So ATSC 1's not going anywhere. So if you buy products from Triveni, if you buy the ATSC 3 licenses, we will give you the ATSC 1 version for free as an upgrade. So that's a great solution if you think about it. StreamScope Analyzer, you can get in combo form, ATSC 3 and 1.0. So, which actually really matters. If you're putting up an ATSC 3 signal, you're disturbing the ATSC 1 service platforms throughout the market. You need both. From Triveni, you get both, and the 1.0 stuff is free. So that's a pretty good uh, story. We think most people like free. It's not just free, it's easy. If you put up our guide builder based broadcast chain for ATSC 3, you will get PSIP licenses for free and forever. So every time a new stick goes up and the ATSC 1 moves again, don't worry about it. We'll put an instance wherever you are putting the new ATSC 1 signals. And we'll handle it with our support team, which actually is very um, kind of renowned. Like everybody. Uh, you said I'm famous. The actual famous guy is over here, Coda, who heads our um, support team. Here's you know? Coda. Uh, You're hi. Famous. I'm getting hi. There, so going to yeah. hi, I'm Coda. <laughs> Coda heads our support team as well as our quality uh, assurance team. Do you and know how many stations are on now? Experimental three stations? Yeah, six. I mean, at least six at least, yeah. Six. Six. And I how think. many is Treveni working with? Six. Six of them, yep. All of them? All yes. of them. Okay. Even the one in Dallas? Yes. Even the one in Dallas. Okay, great, great. Yeah, I have we like question. Sinclair. May I ask a question? With all the cord cutting supposedly going on, are there more, is there a larger percentage of viewers watching off the air than there were? Or is that a flat number? Is it a declining number? Or what is it? Well, there are those in the industry who track that. I'm not exactly one of them, but it does impact our customers. Not only do we have a big you know, business in broadcast television, we also have a pretty big business in the so-called MSO space or MVPD space, cable guys or satellite TV guys. And certainly we see you know, cord cutting numbers that make them have to rebudget a lot about, you know, okay, how much investment are we really gonna do this quarter? Um, I think that, yeah, the cord cutting does see more antenna connected homes. ATSC 3 will make that more feasible, right? The reception characteristics are that much better. Actually, I think that some of the more forward thinking cable companies are trying to collaborate with the broadcasters on how together they can provide additional value to the cable customer. You know, if you think about it, the cable customer is actually the broadcast customer too. Like all the retransmission consent fees or whatever, there's a lot of money that gets paid to the broadcaster for that. They don't like to see cord cutting either. So how would you collaboratively do a better service to those guys to try to create stickiness? You know, one, one idea would be potentially the cable guy gets a more high resolution version of special events like the Super Bowl that would be developed, or sorry, delivered through an interesting mix of ATSC3 over there and potentially broadband connections or something like that. So at least now I think there's a good chance to possibly, with collaboration with broadcasters using the next gen TV platform, you know, come up with additional value for why you should not uh, cut the cord, which everybody will like. And, and we'll have uh, cable guys working with broadcasters more than fighting with broadcasters maybe. So that would be your, good. The benefits, the benefits of your products ripple through and populate through and stay intact all the way through to the cable, out the back into the cable chain, is yeah, that right? Yeah, sure. I, um, our biggest product in cable space, or uh, our biggest product in the cable MSO space is the StreamScope platform, which is really a service quality assurance platform with different 
aspects. There's the monitoring aspect, analysis aspect, etc. So that product very much is useful and deployed broadly in the cable industry um, and satellite TV industry as well. Any thoughts on receivers? When are we going to see some receivers in the United States? ATSC 3. Um, well, there's rumors that you should go to CES and interview people oh, there. Oh, that's right. <laughs> We're going to do that. I'm going to do yeah. that. Yeah. So I, I, I would expect the major players to make announcements at this CES about product availability next year. Okay. In the consumer market in 2020. Spring of 2020. Yes. Right. We're going to wait and see. That's the report from Treveni, NAB, New York 2019.